yeah, how to do this and then uh, how to code it up yourself. And in this course, I do want to introduce a package in R that is able to help you to do get a to give sampler pretty efficiently or like easily in a way that you don't even need to derive the full conditional posterior distribution. Okay, so let me introduce that first and let's see how that how that works. So the particular function, uh, the particular package is called JAX. It's short for just another give sampler. And the particular package that we're going to use is called roundjax in R. So as you can see soon that you have to install that package and then load that package into your R studio, then you can, you can do it. So this package uh, can run MCMC simulations for you pretty easily. And a good feature, I think appealing feature of this um, package or JAX in general, is that soon as you will see that when you create your script, you can, like the script itself, is very descriptive of the model and the prior that you're working with. Okay, so let me just get into uh, the detail. So we're still working with this example. As you recall, that we have um, two unknowns in the normal uh, in the normal model, and then we do have this two full conditional. So I was saying earlier, in order to do the example, we have to say derive this two full conditional posterior distributions and then write a loop to run it, okay? So with JAX, what's good about it is that you don't need to do the steps. Well, they're important to know, as you can see, it will work. So I think it's still important to cover what we just covered today and uh, previous week. But um, for more complicated models later, we can learn this lecture in this uh, semester, we're going to have more parameters and sometimes you won't be able to derive them. So JAX can help you to bypass that and then still run your gig sampler. Okay, so let me show you what you need to do if you don't do the derivation but still want to run the code for yourself. Okay, so let's forget about the full conditional posterior distribution, just focus on the prior and the sampling density. So you still need to know those two, I mean three in this case. You need to know the density to be a normal and you also need to know the prior distribution that you want. Okay, so in JAX, pretty much, as long as you can specify what the data model, which is the sampling density, as well as the prior distribution that you want to use, then the package will be able to, uh, they're going to do their own, like, give sampler within the function, within the package, and then you're going to get the output directly. So this is the sample code. It's also in the R script. So let me... Let me talk about it really quick. So the first two lines is install the package and then load the library. Okay, so that, if you want to try it now, you can do it now. And first important part of doing JAX is that you have to describe the model. Okay. So one way to write it is what I now put in the um, box in green. So you create a object called model stream and inside you're going to write the model and the model has two parts one is for the density sampling density and the other one is from the prior So those, again, I think probably won't be too difficult to understand based on how it is written, right? So let's look at the sampling density part. So the sampling density is shown in equation 19 that we do observe and different observations, right? And each of them is IID normal <coughs> with mean mu and uh, standard, I should say, precision theory. Okay. So that's why we write a loop. And the loop. So here I'm using capital N to represent the number of observations. And one thing to keep in mind is while in R, regular R, when you do R norm, remember, <coughs> it takes the mean and the standard deviation, right? That's typically when you do it in a regular R. You take the mean and then take the standard deviation. However, in JAX, in this particular package, round JAX, they take the mean and the precision. Okay, it's just, it's just how it is written. So instead of keeping 
the mean and standard deviation, you need to give the mean and the phi for it. And as you can also see, this is just notation that we're not doing random draw here anymore, right? We're just trying to describe the model. When we describe normal density, like the sampling density of normal in JETS or in round JETS package, what they use is you use D, I think stands for density here, to describe the density. Okay? So you do D norm, the mean, and the precision. And you write in the loop because you are having IID observations and their N observations in total. Okay. Each of them is following the same normal distribution. Okay. So this part is for the sampling density. The lower part, the two lines down here, as you can see, one is for mu, one is for phi, and these are just the prior distributions that we're giving. Okay. So right now, I'm using mu zero and phi zero and alpha beta. So later, as you can see, that I can just create the input and then fit in the function so I can be more flexible. Okay, so remember, we use mu zero to be, I think, five, and then sigma zero to be one, and then alpha beta to be one. You can input those numbers now, but then the function will be less flexible. You can just do everything outside. Okay, so that's why I'm right now I'm putting this placeholder of mu zero and c zero. Okay? So this is pretty much all you need. And of course, later you have to like uh, fit in the data set, you fit in the prior values that you give from E0, P0, P0, alpha, and beta. But overall, you need the particular model string that we wrote over here, and that's pretty much the main stuff that you need to write. Okay. And of course, we do D norm and D gamma here. Okay. Again, in JAX, you never do R because you are not doing random draw. You're just describing the model. Okay? And for the first part, you're describing the sampling density. It's a normal, and you have N observations, so you write a loop. And then within the loop, you have each of this Y. So again, this bracket is extracting each of the element. And then in the second block down here, it's just specifying the prior distributions that you want for the unknown parameters. All right, sounds good. So I think this is pretty straightforward. And what you do is for, for getting the same uh, stuff that we did before, you're gonna get Y, which again, is just the data. And it's the logged data, okay? And you also need to get the number of observations. So you do that outside as well. And then you create a object called the data. It's a list here. And I'm just feeding all of the values in. Okay, so as you can see that for anything that shows up in the model, you do a quotation mark. Say like we have Y, which is the data in the model previously, in the model string that we wrote. So you have to assign Y to that. Okay? And then for N, you assign N. Mu zero, remember, that was the prior that I said you're gonna give to mu and you assign five. We're, I'm using the exact same uh, prior distributions that we used to do before. And they have zero, alpha, and theta. Okay, so this is the part that I think is flexible if you're writing this way, because later you can change the prior and then play with the code a little bit more. Okay. And then lastly, you round it, and I call a posterior to store all of the results. The function that I use is called round.jax. And this was the normal model that we just wrote in the model stream. Yep. The data you have to fit in. The monitor here is important. So whichever parameter that you want to like save draws about, you put in the monitor command, or like the monitor string over here. So I want to save new and feed. So I get both of them. If you have more parameters, you can add them more, but in this model, we only have two. Okay. We're going to talk about this later, but right now we're running one Gibbs sampler, so we're running one chain. And this are the part that we're going to also talk about in a minute as well. But essentially, this is trying to tell Jax how many iterations I want to run. 
There are some subtleties here with the different names, like the DAP burning sample and thing. I will talk about them in a minute. But for now, what this is showing us is we're running the whole Gibbs sampler for the sum of all of this, which is 8,000 iterations. And then once you run it, you can use the summary command. And then now you can see summary of the two parameter in the model. So I would suggest you to try it out really quick because the code is in the um, R script that I shared. So you can try to see like, you're gonna see like a progress bar looking at Jack's running the code. And then in the end, if you do the summary posterior, you're able to get the summary of B and mu because these are the two parameters. Okay. And these are the two parameters again in the monitor part. If you only fit in mu for monitor, then when you summarize, like summary posterior, like nothing about phi gonna show up because you're not tracking it or not monitoring it, okay? So try that out really quick and see if you can get the program running and then get a sense of how, how the whole thing works. I think I might miss something that I think there's something else that we have to install and download. I like download and install in your laptop that um, in order to make this uh, package run, you, you will need that. So I think instead of me wasting time finding it right now, I will send the link uh, later through email. So once you download that into your laptop and then install the package and everything, you should work. Okay, so let's just pause this for now. But again, uh, Jax works in this way. Okay, you are able to quickly describe your model, the, the sampling data, the sampling model, and then as well as the prior, and then you're able to get the results pretty efficiently. Okay, so I will talk about, I mean, I will send an email about this and then we can go from there. So don't worry if you cannot make it wrong for today. 